Good morning, welcome to DBS This Morning. My name is Maureen. How was your night? I hope you had a good one. Well, let's kick off this morning. Let's go on over to the news desk. Let's see what's happening there. Good morning. An inmate who escaped from the Bodley Correctional Facility on Sunday is safely back behind bars. The coordinated efforts of Bodley Correctional Facility Special Operations Response Team and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force Special Services Unit resulted in the early recapture of Elwin Lansico, who was on the run for about 38 hours. On Monday, 18th September, about 10.45 p.m., the Bodley Correctional Facility Tactical Team, along with other officers, reported the successful recapture of Lansico. The fugitive was apprehended at Prale in Miku at about 10.36 p.m. and was subsequently escorted to the Denry Police Station where he was handed over to the police for processing and further investigations. The Ministry of Commerce Small Business Development Center's Young Entrepreneurship in Action program is being hailed a success. The curtains officially came down on the program at a closing ceremony at the Finance Administrative Center in Castries on Tuesday morning. We sought real-time feedback to determine whether there were any shortfalls and to quickly set about addressing them if they existed. Today, I am especially proud to report that from the 40 students who signed up, 39 completed the program. So that's a 97.5% success rate. So bravo to you students. And of the 19 fifth formers who participated in the program, six were subsequently offered gainful employment. The two-year summer job attachment program aims to expose secondary school students to real-life practical skills that they can in turn use to jumpstart their own entrepreneurial ventures. A group of young people have embarked on a mission to reignite the local chapter of Junior Chamber International. Many young Tentrucians had been inducted into this leadership training organization. Members of the St. Lucia JCs have made a significant or perhaps formidable contribution to the development of their country. In fact, having been, having been trained by the JCs myself, the training would reside with the recipients, the newly inducted JCs, for a, for a lifetime, I hope. It is for this reason that it is difficult to conceive the reasons why the St. Lucia chapter became dormant. Thirteen young individuals were inducted into the group commonly known as the JCs at a recent ceremony. Equity Minister Joachim Henry is advocating for the release of death and birth certificates for people who are unable to afford the cost of having those documents processed. Henry is appealing to government technocrats and other civil servants to be more sensitive in the conduct of their duties. When it comes for vulnerable population, poor people in particular, we need to advocate and advocate strongly. There are things that our poor people go through and because it's not the experience of the, of the average person, it continues. So when people are unable to bury the loved one, this, you know, in a serious way affect marginalized and vulnerable people. Those who can afford, do not go through it. When a young mother is unable to get the, the papers for the baby, to register the baby after birth, it is the poor people who endure these, these things. So there are, yes, children who have reached an age, but they probably have not been registered because of you know, what have you. So I was just advocating what, what has been said and to remind, you know, um, the, the, the technocrats that's important that we, we adhere in protecting the rights of individuals and, and relieving hardship on vulnerable populations. Henry says discussions continue between ministries to address such situations. Those are your top stories. Thanks for watching. Good morning. Thank you very much, News Desk. We take a break and come right back.
first feature, we caught up with, uh, we went over to the Human Resource Center over in Entrepot um, because there was some training or some workshop training session happening there um, in light of creating better men for our youths in entrepreneurship. We caught up with them. We find ourselves over at the Entrepot Human Resource Center. Um, we are, you know, taking in something that is going on right now. I think it's the first of its kind. But these two amazing ladies, this young lady right here, Andresa, who is the president, president of the Castries East Youth and Sports Council. Right. And also a rep from the ministry, um, Sasha. Yes, Sasha right. here, youth worker for the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. All right, wonderful. Now, ladies, what is happening here today? Who's going to go first, the president or the ministry reps? <laughs> what is happening here today? Okay, all right. So today we have the Castries East Youth Business and Club Expo. This is the very first of its kind, as you said. Essentially what we have is a culmination of young business owners, young entrepreneurs who are in the process of registering their businesses or have registered their businesses and we're just giving them the opportunity to get a little insight on the opportunities that are available, both governmental and non-governmental opportunities like you have SEDU, Youth Economy that has just recently come up. So we have a little information workshop where they can get ideas for funding. We also have Ms. Vanessa Long here who is giving them some information on how to manage their businesses, presenting your business, presenting yourself as a business owner. So it's a whole lot of business, business, business happening here today. <laughs> there seems to be a, a very concerted drive um, in ensuring entrepreneurship um, growth, the business development in that area. Um, how long has this program been on with the ministry? Okay, um, well, as you stated, the drive is there definitely because we, you'd come into the communities, myself as a youth worker, I meet a lot of at-risk young people, a lot of people who are unemployed, and the first thing they will tell you, answer job, <laughs> you know? Right. So when you have these requests coming in all the time, there are jobs for every young person who asks you for a job, so we now have reevaluated our stance and are going into the position of let's help you employ yourself and employ other young people. So for the past year, maybe two years, we've had various business expos taking place island-wide. Um, in April, I think, we had one at the Marigo Plain Field where we had young business owners from that community. They gathered there and it was really successful. So we're trying to now execute it in other communities because it's proving to be very beneficial for our young people. Wonderful. Now I'm going to ask you, um, you know, since the two, two year stint, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the successes that you've seen, the growth that you've seen? Okay, during this time, we have had several young people be able to register their businesses officially with Commerce. We have had young people who have benefited already from the Youth Economy Agency and have received grants and loans from the different agencies so it has proven to be we've had young people right now who are actually employing other young people with their small businesses so i honestly am very impressed by our young people and that's why i believe our young people will always be an asset once we tap into them i love this absolutely now let me come on over to the president now this is it within your purview right up your alley um this one is the first the first one of its kind taking place in your constituency what does that mean um for you and the young people within your 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 area what what that means for myself because i am an entrepreneur as well i have benefited from stuff like youth economy i was also a beneficiary of a grant from the south lewis community college so what that means for us is that there is opportunity for you to build yourself and build your business but you need to take the step as to i'm taking up that opportunity you need to make the move all right what's happening how many people signed down today um was it opened to the entire what, what's the what's the scope where was it opened to? okay so priority was given to youth from the cashier's east um constituency however persons after we met our quota for cashier's east we opened it up to the general public so you do have people who are outside of cashier's east attending today right. at least how many persons uh, would be represented here today Okay, so we're hoping to see between 20 to 25 persons here today. Our maximum is 40. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that maybe as some of the young persons are here, that they message some of their business friends and tell them, you know what, come and see what's going on, what's happening, come and get this information. Right. I know you have Vanessa Long, who's going to be giving some insight in her field. Mm -hmm. uh, who are some of the other presenters and what uh, mm -hmm. will be covered today? Okay, so we have Vanessa Long, Mrs. Vanessa Long, who is an image consultant, mm -hmm. and she will be presenting on branding, personal brands, etc. We also have another presenter who has 12 years experience in financial banking, uh, Mr. Hulan 
and Peter, he'll be talking about financial opportunities available, actually establishing different sorts of um, other sorts of incomes outside of your business. We also have persons from Sedu, Youth Economy and Belfon attending here today. Wow, this is quite complete. What do you hope to see at the end of this? I hope to see at the end of this that this will create an avenue for young people to become self-sustainable. We sometimes tend to depend on people to create opportunities for ourselves, but we're hoping by the end of the information session, they see the importance of what it is to create an avenue for yourself and be self-sustainable. Well, well said and well done. Um, I hope this is, you know, you are able to see the successes in what you're putting on today. And from the ministry standpoint, well, kudos. Thank you. Thank you so much. of September. Now for our second feature. It is the month of September. Um, lots of cancer have been recognized within this month, but um, in particular, some light has been shed on childhood or children's cancer. And we caught up with Tamara Remy. She's got a drive on where we need to paint up Friday's gold. And we had a chat with her concerning that. I missed the opportunity to wear my gold today, but I did wear it last Friday. Thank you. Um, I hope Thank you're proud you. of me. I yes, am. I did. You didn't I tag us though. No, I didn't. Ah, I didn't tag you all okay. because... Um, Feel free anytime. Absolutely. This Friday, I'm going to be back at it again. Thank We're you. here with Dr. Ta Tamara Remy. And of course, you know, she is no stranger to us on the DBS morning because she's always got something that she's got her handles on. Because listen, this woman is, she is driven. She is driven in so many ways. And this time around, again, she has put in um, some effort into ensuring that we put the awareness on childhood cancer yes. now before you send me that paint uh the friday gold thing you know it is quite obvious that we don't really hear much about childhood cancer true but we do have a lot of it we have enough of it that we should be aware mm -hmm. um when we speak about cancers people think about genetics yes but they also think about the adult yes. and um in all fairness Genetics probably applies more to the childhood cancers than in adults, mm -hmm. where the adult cancers are probably more because of our environmental factors. So what we eat, what we're exposed to, um, and there are a lot more preventative things that we can do for adult cancers. Whereas childhood, you're born with some sort of defect or a gene that predisposes you to getting oh. cancers. And so there's very little that you can actually do. So when we think about a child who is under the age of one having cancer, I mean, they haven't eaten anything other than maybe breast milk and some formula oh. that, has, that clearly is not going to be predisposing them to getting cancer. But the signs, the symptoms, those are very different as well. You kind of have to pay attention. Mm -hmm. You have to be looking for them. Your child is feeling weak or lethargic or just you know fatigued you have to start thinking about those other things oh. an unusual lump that may not be painful or a bump somewhere that wasn't there before those are all you know things that we want to bring awareness to so it really is although there are other things and other cancers that we create awareness for in september mm -hmm. um, i think it's very deserving that we acknowledge childhood cancers we probably diagnose maybe four or five every year and um, Martinique has been a really good help sick kids in Canada as well because we tend to transfer most of our kids yes. um, to Martinique for treatment. Sometimes they end up in France. Um, so even though we raise funds, it's usually so that we can charter planes for them to right. go across. Oh, gosh. Um, so yeah, and you know September is when school opens. Yes. It's a good time to capture the kids, mm -hmm. um, to get them aware. Right. And we don't want to frighten kids per se, but we want to let them know that if they eat right, if they exercise, if they avoid right. certain foods, mm -hmm. although there's not much you can do in their childhood that might prevent their cancers, but at right. least to just make them aware. But let's, let's talk about that. Speaking of the foods and stuff like that, sometimes listen even as adults our mm -hmm. taste buds could lead us you know Definitely. and so imagine a kid having to um, battle with a taste bud so do we need to go a little bit further is that part of the awareness as well go a little bit further um, in terms is. of channeling what we exactly. what we what we make available to them exactly so coupled with the awareness and just letting kids parents teachers know that there is such a thing as childhood cancer that mm -hmm. kids can get cancer we have coupled or tried to couple 
um, the educational component. Mm -hmm. So we have a program called Healthy Lifestyles where mm -hmm. we target grades four to six in the different schools. Um, we visit, we do exercises with them, and Ooh. we pay particular attention to the sugar content in their favorite drinks. Mm -hmm. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed how much sugar is in something as small as this, four to, four to six ounces. Oh, so we do that, and we've had the blessing of the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. last year, but because we didn't have as many volunteers that you know, would have made it an effective program, oh. we did not, we were not able to roll it out as we would have liked. We're hoping to do the same thing again this year, right. um, but we need to start off by at least just creating the buzz, creating right, the awareness right. about childhood cancers and all the different avenues. So I know various stakeholders are working on, for example, banning sweet sugary beverages in schools mm -hmm. and engaging the relevant parties, nutritional um, programs in schools as well, where we engage, for example, the kitchens at the schools, yes. what should be in the food that we serve, mm -hmm. even the vendors who are serving outside, outside. of the compounds yes. for the schools. I mean, growing up, I used to eat um, gooseberry jam and tamarind mm -hmm. sauce and all those things and it didn't seem like it was a problem but I was exercising I mean there's no lunch time that you're activities. not running yes. around the yeah. school and doing high jump and double dutch and all those things that has changed as yes. well our kids are not as active so that's there's true. no real balance you know mm. to burn off the calories that's true so that's we're hoping to do something all-encompassing and while we acknowledge or you know um, try to highlight that awareness in September certainly is something that we're hoping to do for the entire year, the entire yeah. school year. Wonderful. Now, you, you mentioned volunteerism mm -hmm. because, I mean, you already have a, a mandate on your hand as doctor to take care of the actual um, um, sick. Yes. So th there's, there's got to be some, some way that you, you probably need some assistance in, in exactly. getting the, the, those, those programs rolled out. Exactly. So, so speak to us about that. How can we step in? So, you know, the Media Association, um, <laughs> DBS, everybody has staff and everybody has staff with kids. Everybody has staff who knows somebody who has had cancer or is mm -hmm. currently dealing with cancer. We don't, we don't need people who are cancer survivors or going through a treatment. We don't need for you to only be involved when it hits home. Right. It's something that we need advocacy for and the volunteerism. You can become a member of the Cancer Society or you can just opt to volunteer. Oh. You can bring your 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 specific um, area of expertise. Like in your case, you know that you can create a mood, you can yes. highlight things that we're doing on the radio, on the TV, etc. Anybody, if, you, uh, if you're passionate enough, you can have a tea party, invite us, even if you have five friends, you can do anything. Right. Oh, um, yes. For this in particular, I am willing, the Cancer Society is willing to have training sessions um, for anybody who is interested. We will go to the schools. We do have a set, um, not already a roster, but we have the list of all the primary schools in the different districts. Mm -hmm. And if we get enough people that we can train the different okay. clubs, even the secondary school clubs, we'd love to come on board because mm -hmm. they can probably teach us a thing or two on yes. how to engage younger, younger oh. people. Yeah. Um, and just be interested. We teach you what to do. It's a pretty simple program, but it needs to be effective. We need to reach everybody mm -hmm. so not just the students we would love to engage the parents we'd love to engage the teachers mm -hmm. so a whole PTA mm -hmm. um, is necessary so you can sign up you can call us um, you can visit or check us out on social media okay. show your interest but we really are trying to create that awareness so apart from going gold on Fridays, on Fridays I think there are probably yeah. two more Fridays left yes. in a month um, anything gold, you know, you can do your nails in gold, you yes. can do a design of, of, right. of a cancer ribbon, anything, your hair tie, your crazy socks, anything. Right. We have ribbons, we have some bands available at the Cancer Society okay. that persons can, nice. you know. Um, so we just really, apart from the awareness, we'd love to encourage the volunteerism. Wonderful. You say you can contact, um, connect with you. What are your handles on social? So we are on Instagram at SLU Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. We also have a Facebook page if you type in Solution Cancer Society. Um, we have a website, so if you type in solutioncancersociety.org, you mm -hmm. will get access to all of our information, um, as well as information on cancer. And you can obviously call us, 452-1538, or send us an email at sanushacancersociety at gmail.com. So we're, we're trying to be everywhere. We're not on Twitter, <laughs> <laughs> but we're trying to be everywhere. That sounds quite complete to me. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, great drive. And we, we, we got to see how it is that we can put ourselves in the mix as well, you know. You. Answer the call? Yes, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Thank you.
morning, DBS family, and welcome to another episode of DBS's Lookbook. I am Vanessa Henry Long, your certified image consultant, personal stylist, and makeup artist of Lovely Makeup Artistry and Image Consultancy. This morning, I am also bringing you on another treat right here at Posh Life in Air Valmo. I am going to teach you a little bit on how to mix and match styles. This is a skill. Or I would say an art that some persons have not yet mastered, but I believe it is definitely a skill to consider, especially when you have so many outfits in your closet and you do not know how to put them together. A lot of people struggle with that. So here is a simple tip on how you can make this work. The first thing is to establish what theme are you going for. So for instance, if it is a chic theme, a loud theme, a funny theme, or even if you are looking to put colors, prints, patterns, or if you are going to keep it very simple, classy, or romantic, or I would say a natural style. So you need to establish the theme that you are going for first and foremost. Then now, here is what you are going to do. Pick a main piece. Now this main piece may be something like a pants that you can utilize as, I would say, that piece of inspiration. That piece will allow you now to mix and match whatever it is that you want to put with it. So for instance, this piece is a piece that I would say that is very bold. It has a lot of colors. Therefore, if you are going to mix and match with this piece, you would need to pair it up with a solid because you don't want it to be clashing out too much. And again, you do not want too many colors. So how do you do this? You would need to first and foremost understand your undertone, which is the color beneath your skin. So for instance, if you have a warm undertone, which means that you are more of the golden type individual like myself, you are going to pair this piece up because of all of the colors that it has with a piece that has a warm undertone. So for instance, we are going to pair this piece with this this top. Now this top is an orange piece. Now this orange is what I call a warm orange. So again, because of the warmth in that color, it will bring out the color of your eyes and it will allow you to stand out more. However, if you have more of a warm undertone, instead of pairing this with a warm piece, you would pair it up with either right here, the baby blue, or you can also utilize the pink. And if you don't want to do it, maybe it's too much color for you and you want to keep it a bit more simple, you can just pair it up with a white. See this? So again, the inspiration needs to come from the piece itself. So what is my inspirational piece? Is this Palazzo colored pants. And what am I doing with it? I'm going to pair it up with a top or blazer, a blouse that is a solid color. Now I'm going to show you another way to pair up other outfits, something that may not necessarily be of color, but again, it's a neutral, solid color that you can add some bit of pizzazz, a bit of, of glamour, a bit of chicness to it. Stay tuned. So now I'm going to show you how to mix and match using neutrals. So this is a neutral piece and when I talk about neutrals, I talk about colors like beige, white, black, gray, neutral colors, colors that basically you would wear with any piece. Now this is a way you can rock or mix and match your neutral piece by pairing them together. So for instance, you can pair a beige with a white. You can also pair a beige with um, a same beige by wearing it in a monochromatic way. And when I talk about monochromatic, basically what I'm saying is using the same tone. So for instance, beige with beige, white with white, black with black, gray with gray. You get the gist. So what I'm going to do is also show you another piece that you can utilize in the same type of fashion. It is also a 
neutral piece i would say neutral because of the colors in there it is not too bold however the top now we are utilizing the same color palette which is the same olive color with a little bit of brown so a little bit of earth tone so it's not too loud so if you're wondering oh should i only pair up color with color or bold with bolts no when it comes to the art of mixing and matching styles you can also utilize other colors within the piece to create that inspiration so for instance you can match this very same top with a, a, a brown bottom or even a white bottom or utilizing the orange on that piece as well to pair and match it with so the important aspect to note is to utilize a piece as inspiration then what you can do is pair it with a solid especially if, if it has color then you can utilize an accessory to accessorize it and just give it a little more value and last but by no means least it is always wise to use a neutral color just to blend it out to allow it to have what I would say some harmony in your outfit i hope you did enjoy these simple tips on how you can mix and match your styles so no longer are you going to look in your closet and say mm, i don't have clothes i do not know what to wear and yes it's not just for the ladies men you can utilize that very same tip as well when you look inside your closet you take a main piece you add it with a little accessory you get some inspiration from there you look at the colors and you see how you can mix and match the styles i hope you did enjoy this simple tip and this episode of the lookbook i will see you next time and just a big shout out to my regular fans out there especially those who stop me on the street and say hey lovely i'm waiting for that episode i see you don't you worry just shouting you out there and tell you a, a simple happy good morning and i trust that you have a rest of an amazing week bye <laughs> and that is our show for today i hope you had a wonderful time with us and uh, we're looking forward to being in your company tomorrow and i really do hope that you'd like to be here with us again tomorrow morning on the dbs this morning show